God has a message for you today. And God's message for you today is entitled, Now I Get It. Now I Get It. How God Activates Our Faith. Now I Get It. Is there any one of you who have that moment of now I get it moment? You know that moment when you finally understand a certain event, a certain thing, or a certain person? Meron ka na bang experience na ganito na finally nasabi mo, ay, gets ko na. Kasi nung una, hindi mo nagigets ang isang sitwasyon. Or maaaring hindi mo nagigets yung tao kung bakit siya ganon. But finally, after realization, and after discovery, you finally come to the point that you can say, I get it. Gets ko na. You know what? For me lately, I have this now I get it moment. You know, I just experienced it lately. Uh, every week, I, I'm recording a, a video like this. I'm doing Facebook Live. And I have observed the first and second try that I did it. You will notice it if you're going to go back to the past videos that I did. Is that when I check it, I feel I look awkward. As if I'm looking uh, in a different angle. And I discovered that what I did was, I was looking actually on the screen and not on the camera lens of the phone. Yes, I'm just recording this through iPhone. So my mistake was, I was looking on the screen where I can see myself and I'm not looking on the camera lens. But finally, now I get it. There you go. Now I get it. I get it now that I should look on the camera lens and I should not look on the screen and looking at myself. So today, that's the premise of the message that I want to bring to you, that through this message, I hope and pray that you and I will come to a decision and an exclamation that we can say, now I get it, that we fully understand how God activates our faith. Because if we don't understand fully how God activates our faith, it's so easy to get discouraged. It's so easy to get disappointed. It's so easy to get frustrated. And it's so easy to give up. But when you understand how God activates your faith through situation, through things, and through many ways, you will fully follow the Lord. You will fully trust Him no matter what. You know, just like Thomas, the disciple that we are following in this series, Activate in John chapter 20. And we know in the story that, you know, for three years, take note of that church, for three years, Thomas has been with Jesus. Thomas saw the miracles of Jesus. Thomas heard all the messages of preaching of Jesus. And yet, come on somebody, and yet it was revealed in chapter 20 that all those times, Thomas is not actually activated. Thomas actually didn't get it. The meaning how to live by faith. Actually, he testified it. He said his words. He said, unless I see, I will not believe. Kung hindi daw niya makita, hindi niya paniniwalaan. So all these times, Thomas didn't get it. He missed it. Maybe all these times, just like me on my now I get it moment, if I gonna connect it, maybe because all these times Thomas is looking on a screen where he can see himself instead of looking on the lens of the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody. What I'm saying that maybe we're missing the activation of God in our life is because we're looking in a wrong perspective. We keep looking on the screen where we can see just ourselves, and we are not focusing on the lens of the Lord. And today, I hope and pray that we will get what God is trying to send to us, that He's sending you a message that God is activating your faith when you look on the lens of the Lord. And that's the reason why I believe that Jesus came back so that Thomas will fully realize his mistake, and on that day, come on, activation day, there will be a moment in your life that God will give you an activation. On that day, on John chapter 20, it is an activation day for Thomas. He finally realized, he exclaimed these words, my Lord and my God. Thomas finally get it. So as we proceed to the word of God and in John chapter 20, 
I want you to take note how the chapter ended. Two verses in John chapter 20, the author John wrote there a very interesting words. And I want you to take note of that because that will be the text of our message for today. It said in the word, okay, John chapter 20, verse 30 to 31. Take note of the words that I'm going to read. It says here, and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. May God bless the reading of his word. I hope that today you will understand how God activates your faith. Want to know it? Are you ready? So here's how. Okay, take note of this. The number one thing, it was written in the word of God. It says in the verse, but these are written that you may believe. The first thing that God uses to activate your faith is first and foremost, none other than the scriptures or the Bible or the word of God. You can never activate your faith without the word of God. The Bible says, for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the word of God is very important because it says here, these are written. Kaya ito isinulat para tayo lahat manampalataya sa Panginoon. Can I just clarify to you that this book is not just to inform you. This is to transform you. This book is not even just to inspire you. This book is uh, purpose is to save you. The purpose is, of this book is so that you may know Jesus. Actually, can I say this? This book is not even a religious book. This book was written not to make you religious. This book has been written so that he will make you truly righteous in the sight of the Lord and righteous in the sight of God. And that is why I want to tell you that, you know, God is activating your faith through the word of God. The word of God is inspired. This is not words of men. This is an inspired word of God. What has been written will always come true, will always be accomplished because the word of God will never fail. So the first thing that God is using to activate you is this book. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this book. We are not activated by the words of men. We are not activated by ideas of men. We are activated by the word of God. That's the only thing that can give life. This has been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you will have life through his name. Yes, in this book, there is life. How many of you can testify to me? No, may mga pagkakataon na ikaw ay down, discouraged, di mo alam kung saan ka patungo, depressed, or maybe litong-lito, heartbroken, or maybe in all kinds of situations, ikaw ay bagsak na bagsak. Who can testify to me na pag binuksan mo itong salita ng Diyos, it will really speak to you. It will really address your heart. You know why? Because this book is a living book. This is the only book in the world that can give you life. And that is why the first thing that will activate your faith is the scriptures. So please, if you want to be activated in the faith, don't just go to the news feed. Go to the good news. Read the book. Read the word of God. Because this is the main thing that will activate your faith. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now let's go to the second thing. It says in the word, and I want you to take note on John chapter 20 verse 30. It says, and truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Okay? Can you take note of that? The first one are those things that are written so that you believe. But it was emphasized here that there are many other things Jesus did that was not written in the book. What does it mean? Can I present to you? The second thing that God is using to activate your faith. And most of us didn't, cannot understand how God is using this. 
You know, this is a kind of situation that we all always ask, bakit to ginawa ni Lord? Bakit di ko maintindihan? Ladies and gentlemen, the second thing that God uses to activate your faith is this, the secret things of God. Why? Because God doesn't have to reveal everything to you in order for you to believe. God doesn't have to show everything to you in order for you to believe. God doesn't have to explain everything to you in order for you to believe. Yan nga ang inaddress ni Jesus kay Thomas, right? Ano sabi ni Lord kay Thomas? Sabi ni, ni, ni Lord kay Thomas, Blessed are those people who have not seen but believe. The, because that's the, that, I think that's the, our main problem here that we need to understand. Kasi, porke ba't hindi natin makita, hindi na tayo maniniwala? Porke ba hindi pinapakita ng Diyos, hindi na tayo maniniwala? Porke ba hindi natin maintindihan ang isang bagay, hindi na tayo maniniwala? Porke ba walang ibinibigay ang Panginoon, wala siyang sinasagot sa panalangin, hindi na tayo maniniwala? Actually, yun ang sukatan kung tayo ay mananampalataya pa rin. Na kahit wala tayong makita, kahit wala tayong maintindihan, kahit di natin matanggap, pero naniniwala ka pa rin, hindi ka nawawala ng pag-asa, na hindi ka pinapabayaan ng Diyos, di mo man maintindihan. Pero naniniwala ka na ang Diyos na nagbibigay ng buhay sa iyo ay kailanman hindi ka pinapabayaan. I hope that today, somebody will said, Now I get it. I may not understand it. I may not fully see it. But now I get it. The reason why I can't understand it so that I will believe. Because you believe not because you see. You believe even though you can't see, even though you don't understand. And this is the reason why I want to tell you that, di ba ang sabi natin, ang, 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 ang relationship natin kay Lord is that, yun na lang motivate sa atin, right? What we have, Christianity, is about relationship with God. Kung ilagay ko sa illustration na ganito, for example, okay, hear me now. For example, may isang lalaki na mahal na mahal ang isang babae. At every day pag pupuntahan niya, bibisitahin niya, palagi siyang may dalang bagong regalo. Sabihin natin, relo, phone, or jewelries, or food, or maybe milk tea, or any kind of surprises. At tuwang-tuwa ang babaeng ito dahil siya ay palaging shower ng, ng mga bagay na pinapakita ng kanyang uh, nagmamahal sa kanyang lalaki. But what if one day, wala nang maipakita itong lalaking ito? At sasabihin ng girl na ito, sasabihin ng babae na, Okay, ayawa na dahil wala na akong makita. Disappointed ang babae, uh, frustrated siya dahil wala nang maipakita yung, kanyang, uh, yung lalaki na nagmamahal sa kanya. And, and you may think yung illustration na yun ay maaaring shallow in the thing, pero hindi. What I can say is that it's, it exposes our shallowness in our relationship with the Lord. Actually, It, it happens to most of us people in the Lord. Kaya tayo, ang relationship natin ay based palagi pag may makita lang tayo na galing sa Panginoon. Na tayo i-shower palagi ng Panginoon ng pagpapala. At kung wala na tayong makita ang pagpapala, wala na tayong makita ang revelation ni Lord, wala na tayong makita ang paggabay sa Kanya, wala na tayong makita ang pag, pag-asikaso niya sa atin, how many of most of us ay mabilis tayong ma-discourage at halos to the point na ayaw mo na. It just shows na ganun kababaw ang relationship na meron tayo kay Lord. That's why yun ang narealize si Thomas. Sabi ni Thomas, now I get it. My relationship is not based on what I get. Oh, come on somebody. My relationship is based on my faith and God's love for me. It is not what I get. It is not what I see. It is not what I just understand. Even though I don't understand, even though I don't see blessing, even though I don't see breakthroughs, I will keep trusting the Lord because that is how God activating my faith. The moment I don't understand, the moment I don't see, the moment I can grasp to, to comprehend everything, God is activating my faith. Go back to the word. Pwede naman isulat ng Diyos lahat ng ginawa ni Jesus. Pero sinabi sa Bible mismo, in John chapter 20 verse 30, hindi sinulat lahat. Hindi pinakita lahat. It's because hindi kailangan ipakita ng Diyos lahat sa iyo para maniwala ka lang. Can I say the verse? In, in, in Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2, listen to me now. I hope you're gonna get this. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. 
He also said in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, hear me out, hear me out. I hope you can say, now I get it. Hear me out. He says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. What God is saying, there are things that has already been revealed and it's already written in the book. So get activated by reading this book. But if there come a point in your life that there are situations in your life you don't see, that you don't understand, that you can't comprehend, you should not doubt the Lord. Actually, when those things are happening, that's the moment that God is activating your faith. Why? Because the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And the Bible says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. I hope na ngayon, sa pagpipreach ko, it discomforts you. Na may mga bagay na hindi ka maintindihan at kailanman hindi mo maintindihan kasi kailangan ang pagalahin mo ay ang iyong pananampalataya. When God is not showing you something, He is activating your faith. And I hope and pray that this will comfort you, that you let it go and you don't Keep on trying to ask question or to ask blessing before you believe. Even you don't say you believe. Jesus said that to Thomas. And maybe God is saying this to you right now. Yes, sayo. Na may nangyayari sa'yo ngayon na hindi mo maintindihan. Di mo maipaliwanag. Masakit. Di mo makita yung pinapakita sa'yo ng Panginoon. I hope na itong minsang ito will comfort you and will bless you. That even though you don't say, you choose to believe. You choose to believe on Jesus. And that's how God activates your faith. Now let's go to number three because this number three is a very special one. It is laid down in chapter 20 verse 30. Hear the word. It says, Truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. What does this mean? This represents the signs and miracles. Now, now follow me. Don't, uh, don't lose this revelation that you're going to get today. This is very important. God spoke about the signs or the miracles. Now, don't you know that there were just seven miracles that were written in the book of John? Oh, come on. The turning of water into wine in the wedding in Cana shows that Jesus is the situation changer. He can change elements. He is the situation changer for our life. And the healing of the nobleman's son, it shows that Jesus is a healer. Oh, come on, somebody. And the third miracle, the healing of the lame man who has been paralyzed for 38 years and has been healed in the pool of Bethesda, it shows that Jesus Christ is a restorer. And the number four miracle is the feeding of the 5,000. And that shows that Jesus is a provider. The number five miracle is the healing of a blind man. It shows Jesus as the vision giver. And the raising of Lazarus shows that Jesus Christ is a life giver. And the number seven miracle, the resurrection of Jesus, shows that Jesus is a death defier, a death conqueror. Oh, come on, somebody. This is the Jesus whom we are serving. Jesus is a situation changer. Jesus is a healer. Jesus is a restorer. Jesus is a provider. Jesus is a vision giver. Jesus is a life giver. And Jesus is a death defier and a death conqueror. Come on somebody. Can we praise the Lord Jesus for who he is? And this has been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of God who can perform these miracles. I hope somebody will say in the house or wherever you are right now, sabihin mo, gets ko na na hindi ako kailanman pababayaan ng Diyos. Gets ko na na kay Jesus wala akong talo. Gets ko na na hindi ako pababayaan ng Panginoon. Now I get it. This is how God activates my faith signs and wonders and miracles. Now let's go to the last one on how God activates your faith. 
And this last one, don't miss this. This is the most important one. You cannot afford to miss this. The Savior. The Bible says, this has been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God. Let me explain. Let me explain. I want you to take note the word that John used in John chapter 20 verse 30. It says in the word, there are many other what? Come on, follow me now. John did not use the word miracles. Although those things are miracles. You know, the, the seven things I mentioned to you a while ago. He did not call it miracles. Mm -hmm. He called it signs. Bakit kaya tinawag ni John yung mga miracles na yon, hindi miracles, kundi tinawag niya na signs? If we get the meaning of this, we will fully understand and you can say, now I get it, why John wrote the word sign in those verses. Now, follow me now. Why did John wrote the word sign instead of miracles? This reason, because you have to understand the purpose of the sign. The sign or signages, okay? The purpose of the sign is not to point you to itself. Oh, come on. The purpose of the sign is to point you to a destination. Oh, come on, somebody. So can I declare to you, can I preach to you today, that the purpose of all the miracles is not to point you to the miracles itself. The purpose of the miracles is none other than to point you to the person, and that person is Jesus. If the miracle is not pointing, to, pointing you to the, to the Savior, you are missing it. Now, why, why John is explaining this about signs? You know why? Because there are many people who are seeking the signs, but are not seeking Jesus. Oh, hear me out now. Many people just want the blessing. Many people just want the signs. Many people are seeking the miracles, but they are not actually believing in Jesus. Believing in Jesus as what? As a Savior. As a Savior that who can save them, who can pardon their sins, who can give them eternal life, that can give them heaven. They can believe that Jesus is a bless, uh, can give blessing, can provide, but they can't believe that Jesus is the Savior. And here's the point why this has been written so that you will fully get it that the purpose of everything is to save you and that you will know the Savior and you will have a personal relationship with Jesus and that you will know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, who take away the sins of the world, who, has, who came to save you and to pardon you and to give you a new life. That's the purpose of the sign. Can I, can I explain this to you in a, in a more practical way? So that you will understand the purpose of the sign. Lahat tayo nakakita ng mga signs kung saan tayo papunta. Ang purpose ng sign, tinuturo tayo kung saan tayo papunta, right? Hindi tinuturo ng sign na papunta ka sa kanya. Papunta ka kung nasaan. Let me explain. Uh, palagi ako nababiyahe papuntang Baguio. Okay? And when you go into Baguio, pa to travel ka, or maybe you're driving going to Baguio, paglabas mo sa Manila, makikita mo doon sa kanan, and nakalagay doon is to Baguio. Pagdating mo sa Teplex, there's a sign there that says to Baguio. Now, hear me out. Ang purpose ng sign na yun ay ituro ako kung saan ako papunta. Hindi ako tinuturo ng sign na doon ako pumunta sa kanya. Tinuturo ako ng sign kung saan ako papunta. That will be crazy of me kung ako ay bababa sa tarlat, at uh, dahil nakita ko yung sign to Baguio, bumaba ako doon, and then nag-celebrate ako doon, Yay! I'm now in Baguio! No, I'm not. Wala ako sa Baguio. Nandun lang ako sa sign. Are you getting the point? Now, why I'm saying this? You know why? Because many people are stopping on the signs. Mm -hmm. Many people are just chasing the sign. Many people just want the blessing. Many people are just wanting... Uh, the miracles of Jesus. You don't stop at the sign. You go to where it's pointing at. What's pointing at? That you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus fully knows this. He said in John chapter 4, verse 4 to 8, He said, listen to me. He said, 
Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Alam ni Lord ang pakay lang ng iba ay makatanggap ng something galing sa kanya pero hindi naman nanawala sa kanya. Sinabi pa niya sa John chapter 6 verse 26, he said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Take note that this was after he had fed as many as 20,000 people. And you know what? God is saying to them, all you're doing now is I've given you signs, but all you're doing is chasing for your own gratification. You want the food, you want the healing, you want the breakthrough, you want the miracles, but you're not chasing me. You are just chasing the signs. Don't stop at the signs. Don't stop just enjoying the blessing don't chase the sign the sign should point you to jesus we don't get it that we receive all those things to point us to jesus the seven things the seven miracles that i mentioned to you a while ago the purpose of those things is to point you that's why they are called signs not miracles although they are miracles but they were called as signs because all of those seven experiences that you have should point you to believe that Jesus Christ is your Savior, the Messiah, Christ, the Son of God. Don't stop at the signs. Don't stop just being blessed. Know the source of your blessing. Don't stop at being informed. Be saved. Don't stop at being inspired. Be saved. Know Jesus personally. You know, Jesus is a situation changer. But don't stop knowing Jesus just as a person who can change your situation. Know Him as a person who can save your soul. Jesus is a healer. But don't just stop knowing Jesus as a healer who can heal your body. He can also heal your soul. Yes, Jesus is a restorer. But don't just stop knowing Jesus as a restorer. Not only that He can restore your joy, He can save your soul. Yes, Jesus is a provider, but don't stop just knowing Jesus as a provider who can provide all your needs, that when you pray for material things, that He can provide it to you. Don't just stop knowing Him as a provider. Know Him as a Savior, that He can give you more than just material things. He can give you spiritual things. He can save your soul. Yes, Jesus is a, is a vision giver. But don't just stop knowing Jesus as a vision giver. Know Him as a person who can give a light to your soul, who can save you. Yes, Jesus is a life giver. But don't just stop knowing Jesus as a person who can give you life here. He can give you eternal life. Even after death, He can give you life. Yes, Jesus is a resurrected King. But don't just stop knowing Jesus as a resurrected King. Know Him that He can resurrect you. He can save you. And today, this is my plea to you. Those things, the miracles, has been called signs. The blessings has been called signs. Why? To point you to Jesus. The purpose of all the things that we receive, everything should point to Jesus. For what? For you and I to be saved. Kasi, pakinggan niyo pong mabuti. Nagbago nga ang sitwasyon mo. Hindi ka naman naligtas. Gumaling nga ang katawan mo. Hindi naman gumaling ang kaluluwa mo. Nabigyan ka ng pagpapala, mga material things, pero hindi ka naman nagkaroon ng tunay na pagpapala, spiritual, at hindi ka naman naligtas. Makamtan mo man ang lahat, pero hindi ka naman naligtas. Sabihin pa natin na ikaw ay naging reliyoso, naging mabuti, pero hindi ka naman naligtas. Pero dapat malaman natin lahat na lahat ng ito ay dapat papunta na makilala mo na si Kristo ay iyong personal na tagapagligtas. Kasi kung hindi tayo maligtas, sayang lahat yung pagkakaalam natin sa mga bagay na to. I hope and pray that today you can say, Now I get it, that all miracles should point me to Jesus. Now I get it, that all of the blessings should point me to Jesus. Now I get it that all of the experiences that I have should point me to Jesus to believe on His name that He is the Christ. Christ means the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Son of God so that you will believe on His name and that you will have life when you believe on His name. What does it mean? 
for you to be saved. Can I also encourage the church concerning this? This is the reason why. Let us not point people just to have blessings. Oh, come on. Let us not just point people to inspiration. Let us not just point people for a situation change in their lives. Let us not just point people for blessings. Let us just point, point people for healing. Come on, church. Let us point people to Jesus being the Savior who can save them. Why? Because the most important thing in this world is to be saved. The Bible says, What profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and loses his own soul? It is very important for you and I to be saved. More than just to be healed. More than just to be inspired. More than just to be good in this world. The most important thing is to be saved. Kung hindi mahalaga yon, bakit pa kailangan bumaba sa Jesus sa lupa at mamatay sa sa krus? Kung yun ang hindi pinakamahalaga. The reason why hindi niya sinulat, hindi niya sinama lahat ng mga miracles or signs na ginawa niya at in-include lang yung pinakamahalaga kasi ang purpose ng lahat, sabi niya, so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Ang pinakamahalaga sa lahat ay matiyak mong papuntang langit. Matiyak mo ang kaligtasan. Matiyak mo na sure ka na ikaw ay ligtas. Paano? Ang sabi ng word is to believe on Jesus as the Christ, the Son of God. Can I encourage the church? Sabi rito, signs is pointing to Jesus. That's why we should not point people. We are not pointing you to our church. We are not pointing you to ourselves. We are not pointing you to any personality. We are not pointing you to a principle. We are not pointing you to a creed. We are not pointing you to a law. We are pointing you to a person because only a person can have relationship with you. Only a person can die on the cross and his name is Jesus. And that Jesus is the Christ, which means the Messiah, the anointed one who can, who can only save you. It is not religion. It is not your good works. It is not somebody else who can save you. It is not even the saints. It's not organization. It's not money. Only Jesus died on the cross and is the only one who can save you. How? It is already expressed in the word that we have read. This has been written that you will believe on Jesus as the Christ and the Son of God. And that by believing, you might, you might have life through His name. That life, John 3.16 said, that is an everlasting life. Which means... You can be sure of heaven. You can be sure of forgiveness. You can be sure that you can be saved. How? By trusting in the Lord. This is how God activates your faith. And you can say, now I get it. Now, not only now I get it, but I hope that you get the Savior by trusting in Jesus. So if that's you, I don't care if matagal na kayo sa church. I don't care kung nakapag-church ako sa ibang church. Going to church will not save you. Only Jesus can save you. And maybe the reason why you are still here right now, because of this point that you finally get it, that it's not religion, it is relationship in Jesus that can only save you. And if that is you, I want to guide you in prayer, to lead you in a prayer of believing in Jesus. And if that is you, you can close your eyes and you can follow me in this prayer and believing in Jesus. Here's a prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this moment that I finally understand that I need you because I need to be saved. Thank you, Jesus, that you paid for my sins on the cross. Thank you that you died on the cross for me. Because you don't want me to be condemned. You don't want me to go to hell and to condemnation. You want to save me. This is the reason why you came for me. And today is the activation of my salvation. I accept you in my heart. I believe in you that you are the Christ, my Messiah, my Savior, my God. And today I accept you and I believe in you. Thank you for your forgiveness thank you for the new life thank you Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ my Lord amen and amen 
Wow, if that's you, I'm celebrating with you that today salvation for you has been activated. You got the most important thing in this world and that is to be saved, to be secure of heaven, that you will know and have relationship with Jesus. So church, I hope and pray that today you fully get it now. You can say, now I get it. Gets gonna. That in order for me to be activated in the faith, I need to have scriptures, the secret things of the Lord, signs and wonders, but I will not stop at the signs. I will go to the Savior. And you know what? Going back to Thomas, that's the reason why Thomas finally bowed down to Jesus and he said, My Lord and my God. Take note of the word my. It was personal. The experience of Jesus should be personal. And today, I congratulate you, you who followed me in prayer, who believe in Jesus. I want to congratulate you because you have now a new life, an eternal life. We want to celebrate with you. And I hope you can do us a favor. If that's you who followed the prayer of salvation, I hope you can comment and you can say that you are a VIP. And we want to connect with you after the service. There will be people that will be connecting to you, will be available for you. And this week, uh, we want to see you in our uh, eConnect. We want to see you in our Zoom meetings. We want to meet you in person because you are special for us. And for us, a church, come on church. This is the activation of our faith. Let us go activated in preaching the gospel. Church, let us point everybody to Jesus.